Ryan, my good friend, I've been looking for a long time to talk to you uh, about your important book and all the work that you've done. But big developments today, uh, this week, in terms of the sentencing of, uh, of January 6 participants. Where are we on this? You know, so right now we're at the point where there are a thousand, a hundred people who have been arrested, but the total scope of people who could be arrested is more than 3,000. And frankly, we're just not going to get to that number uh, based on the statute of limitations, which expires in just over two years now, uh, because we're already almost three years into the statute of limitations. So really, these uh, these cases need to sort of, I think, take a little bit of a, a kick in the pants. I think that's something that the online sleuths have really been uh, focusing on, sort of pressuring the FBI to bring uh, forward more of these cases, because there are a thousand people who have been identified. Identified uh, who have still not yet uh, been arrested, including really violent offenders. And we saw some additional arrests this week, but the pace, they say, really has to pick up in order to get to all of these um, individuals who committed really violent, awful acts um, on, on, on January 6th and still have not yet uh, been arrested. So they're still sort of kicking away at this today. Ruth, give me some historical context on this, because when we look at people in the past who have defied democracy, um, what, what's the relevance of these people that, that Ryan has been uh, judiciously reporting on for the last couple of years being arrested, charged, and convicted uh, while, while Donald Trump still hasn't been convicted? Yeah, I mean, any any accountability is is very very important. But as you know, Ali, uh, I do see Trump as not just an authoritarian, but a kind of a cult leader. And January 6 was a cult leader rescue operation. Uh, he called out to them in distress to save him, and they came. And so um, until the cult leader uh, is kind of uh, de his power is deflated or he's banned for politics, which is what they did to Bolsonaro after his uh, insurrection, the danger remains. Uh, Ryan, uh, let's talk about Federico Klein. He was a, uh, a State Department a, a, a appointee. Um, and, and this is part of the problem that Ruth is talking about. There are people who were even within the government. There were a lot of these, these people who've been arrested, who you've reported on, who were sort of outsiders, right? They were, they were yeah. fodder for Donald Trump, and, and they've said so much in court. But then you've got people all the way from sort of John Eastman uh, down to this guy who w worked for the government. They were inside the government, and they thought, it, in some sense, their responsibility to try and fix whatever was broken in the 2020 election. Yeah, and I think sort of the giveaway in this case is that Federico Klein did not speak uh, during uh, during his sentencing. And what that tells me, um, and based on trying to question him afterwards about whether, you know, how what he thought of the sentencing, whether he still thought that the January 6th, or rather, whether he still thought that uh, the 2020 presidential election was stolen, and if he had any regrets about January 6th, and him declining to answer every one of those questions, uh, seems to me that he probably still believes that the election is stolen, and that was why his, uh, his lawyer decided it was not a great idea for him to speak um, in court. And the judge found that there was no evidence of remorse in his case. Um, so I think that that is really illustrative, because it's really interesting when you have these cases, when they ultimately get to the sentencing point, to hear from the defendants about what they right. actually believe. And a lot of them are now realizing, oh, I got fooled, I got tricked, I sort of fell for this sort of online garbage and what Donald Trump was telling me about the 2020 election. But there are plenty of defendants who still, in their heart, believe that. And reason and logic really won't get through to them. And I think that's where the sleuths sort of see their role is, OK, reason and logic aren't going to break through. We're not going to convince people that the election wasn't stolen and, you know, convince them that they were sort of conned in this situation. So we have to make sure that there are going to be consequences for individuals uh, who choose to violate the law uh, to you know, bring forward and try to, you know, bring about this, uh, this, this uh, overturn the election based upon, you know, sort of inf misinformation that they've read on the Internet. So, Ruth, again, historical context there. Some of these people uh, come out and they're remorseful and they're crying. And we've, we've heard from their families about how they were misguided and they, they sort of went down these rabbit holes. But there are some who are not. Um, how, does this, you know, how does this play out? Because there are a whole bunch of people who believe that they, too, are martyrs for this cause. They, you know, Donald Trump likes to speak of himself as a martyr in some ways. But there are people who still think that there is a cause to be martyred for. That's right. And uh, it's very disturbing, this whole conversion of the narrative of January 6th with these thugs who attacked the Capitol uh, being now political prisoners. And by the way, when he kicked off his presidential campaign at Waco, 
he already started talking about them as political prisoners, and he introduced this idea of the January 6 choir. And that has kind of church-like, you know, associations. So it makes these people into um, positive figures, into kind of, the, it's like the Trump liturgy. And all of this is very fascist. Um, it reminds me, you know, after the March on Rome in 1922 in Italy, uh, those who were harmed or who were imprisoned, they were called martyrs, and there was a whole liturgy that came up around these people. So the message is that um, the insurrection is continuing, and these people are uh, the heroes. And that's, of course, very dangerous for our democracy. Ryan, uh, you and I were together. I, I, you know, time has has got no sense anymore. It's a couple of months ago, and you you gave me a copy of of your book, and I've been dying to ask you since then, uh, as you followed this so closely, and you've seen every one of these uh, these trials, or at least most of them. What what's your takeaway right now? Where are we in in this process of, um, you know, of of these people who, as you say, some of them fell into the rabbit hole, and some of them uh, are still believers. Where, where are we in the in the pursuit of justice? because we're coming up on the next election soon. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, if Donald Trump is elected, sort of, this is all out the window, right? A lot of these cases are going to be dismissed, and a lot of people will go free, because there are, you know, a thousand people who have been identified right now who have not yet been arrested. You could bring cases against them tomorrow. The system really couldn't handle that. But he's got to spread it out over the next uh, two years, is really the approach that they, that they need to take. And, you know, there are just really people who really violently assaulted officers who have already been identified, who have not yet been charged. And, you know, they have that two-year timeline to get this done. But I think, you know, big picture-wise, it really has really brought up some deeper issues, I think, within the FBI, especially when it comes to open source intelligence and how they're looking at all of these things. It was a really massive failure before January 6th, um, and they're not necessarily doing all that they can, I think, at this point to bring more of these cases forward. They've had some big successes. Sure, the seditious conspiracy trials, of course, were really historic. Um, but there are a number of people who just, you know, thugs who really assaulted officers that day who have not yet been held accountable for their actions.